All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about all the different parts of a, a curb painting business. Uh, in high school, um, I was delivering pizzas and it was always super frustrating when uh, I would get to a house and there was no address that could be visibly seen on the house or on the curb or anywhere close by. And um, so I got this idea of maybe, you know, I should go around and paint all the, the numbers on the curbs because the houses that had that were always super easy to deliver the pizzas to. Um, having the number painted on your curb really does increase your pizza delivery time by probably like three to five minutes. Um, and not only pizza guys, but you know, like if you ever need an ambulance or maybe the police or anything like that, friends, relatives coming to visit your house, like it's something that really does need to be done. It's, an, it's a service that people really do need. So when I went out and did it, um, I, I charged about 15 bucks a house. And the whole process would probably take, you know, to paint the number on the curb, the process would take about 15 minutes. So theoretically, you know, if you were in a good neighborhood and you have uh, a steady flow of houses coming through, you could probably make anywhere from, you know, 20 to 50 bucks an hour. Um, just, you know, just really depends on how many houses want it done. I, there's a couple different ways of finding people. Um, you know, friends and relatives always help out. But uh, once you get out of that little bubble, um, you can start doing flyers. I didn't have a whole lot of success with flyers. I would say for every 100 flyers I put out, I'd have about four or five houses that would be willing to paint their curb. Um, so what I found worked best is, you know, just knocking doors. And then if the person wasn't there, you just leave a flyer behind and that's kind of, you know, covering all your bases afterward. All right, so I'm going to explain really quick just kind of the process behind the painting of the curb. But I'm also going to include a link of another guy who made a video of how to do it. Um, it's the same video I used, and it's probably the best video out there. So what I would do was once I had a house that was willing to, to get the number painted on the curb, I would go and kind of block out uh, an area of the curb, you know, kind of scrub it down with a wire brush really quick, get all the dirt and stuff off, and then make a paint uh, rectangle uh, with tape and paint inside of the tape with, uh, with white paint. And I would have uh, kind of a cutout of a big piece of paper that I could put over it so that when I painted it would only go on that square and there wouldn't be any like uh, extra uh, like bleed out of the paint when I would use the spray paint uh, for the base. Anyway, then you gotta leave it for 10-15 minutes till it's dry to the touch and you can take the stencils then. I had four inch stencils, um, just you know, three inch seemed a little bit small, four inch is something that you can visibly see from the street and uh, I would take each individual stencil, um, like let's say the house was 375, then you put those in order, and then uh, you spray this uh, stuff on the back so it'll stick to the paint underneath and it won't allow paint to seep through. Like when you're spray painting, the, the, the force of the air will kind of push the paint underneath the stencil unless you kind of have this stencil um, sticking stuff. I'll put a link down in the description for that. Um, and that stuff helps the stencil stick against the cement so it doesn't bleed out. Anyway, so once that's sprayed on there, you put the stencil on. Uh, I would do a white background with black numbers. And you spray paint that on. And you pull the stencil off. And then while the paint's still wet, I would take this glass beading. It's kind of like this reflective glass stuff that you can sprinkle on top of the paint so that it reflects more with car headlights and things. And uh, that really helps it stand out. And it's, a, it's really a big selling point for the customer as well. And so once that's done, that's really the whole process. It's pretty straightforward. And like I mentioned before, it only takes about 15 minutes to do. So once you get out of kind of like your own uh, circle of family and friends in your own neighborhood, um, I would suggest, you know, calling up your city and finding out what it takes to make it legal in your city. Every city is a little bit different. Um, they did mention, though, that if you are going to sell door-to-door, -door, you do need a permit for that. Um, my city costs 25 bucks if you're only going to be one person. Uh, so that wasn't too bad. Um, but, you know, just be on the safe side, you know, you can always look into setting up an LLC. You can do that online for relatively cheap. Um, getting a business license from the city is also not too expensive either. So if you plan on, you know, going out and making it a big deal, uh, make sure you're, you're taking all the steps to make it legal as well. Anyway, so if you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments. Um, I respond pretty quickly. Uh, I can kind of, if, if I left anything out, just let me know. And I do post videos about every week or so, so if you do want to subscribe, that'd be great. And uh, yeah, thanks.